comes to matters of the heart, you want to know all you can to help keep it running properly. Well, good news. It looks like researchers may be making two big prescription advances when it comes to lowering bad cholesterol. Bad news, there's a catch. One experimental medication comes in an injectable form, and when given with statins like Lipitor and Zocor, bad cholesterol was lowered by 60%. Some cardiologists say that result is really unheard of. Researchers add not only did the drugs cut LDL or bad cholesterol, they also lowered the risk of heart problems and cardiac death rates by about 50%. Doctors say these results are especially important given that many people can't tolerate statins. But, like with any drug, the medications come with some potential downfalls. The injectable drugs would be taken once or twice a month, depending on the dose, costing between seven and $10,000 per patient per year. Statins now cost around 40 bucks a month. The other issue is one to two percent of patients testing the drugs temporarily lost their memory, they were confused, or it impacted their thinking. Now, definitive studies will take about two more years. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is expected to decide whether to approve two of the drugs this summer based on results of the studies done so far. Well, this news comes not long after finding out new research pointing to the safety and effectiveness of statin drugs. Scientists say while the cholesterol-lowering drugs dramatically reduce cholesterol levels, they do not show a real difference when it comes to your heart. Now, researchers add the side effects of these once miracle drugs include increased rates of diabetes, cancer, and other disorders. So you know there are good and bad cholesterols, but do you really know what cholesterol is? Well, according to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, cholesterol is a fatty substance called a lipid. It's important to us because it helps aid in our body functioning normally. The two types are HDL, or high-density lipoproteins, which are the good protective ones. You want those numbers above 40 to 45, the higher the better. LDL, or low-density lipoproteins, which are the bad and harmful ones, you want that number to be below 70. Cholesterol is produced mainly in the liver, but it can also be found in foods. And Jimmy, that's important to note because researchers have found that cardiovascular health can decline in childhood. The eating habits of 9,000 children were studied showing unhealthy childhood behaviors like bad diets drive up cholesterol and blood pressure levels. Experts say parents need to do a better job in curbing salt and sugars and should try pushing more whole grains, fruits, and veggies. Lisa, I am glad that you said that. You probably remember just last month we told you just one avocado a day could keep the bad cholesterol away. Researchers looked at 45 healthy, overweight, or obese adults who followed several different cholesterol-lowering diets. They found that people who ate an avocado every day had lower levels of bad cholesterol. Medical experts say the key to the fruit's lowering power is its fiber. The National Institutes of Health and the Hass Avocado Board funded that story, by the way. And some other food packing a cholesterol-lowering punch are ones that kick it up a notch. Chili peppers, jalapenos, habaneros, and cayenne pepper, as well as other spicy food, have been seen to help your health by lowering your LDL, which then increases your blood flow. Yeah. Now, that's key to uh, everything here because cholesterol can increase the risk of atherosclerosis. That's your chance of heart attacks, strokes, and TIAs, or mini strokes. Now, all of this is life impacting, and in many cases, life-saving information. And if by providing this information grabs just one person to change their lifestyle and make the move toward better health, well, it's worth it. And you know something else that's worth it? Being the right place at the right time. And that is certainly the case with our next story. A medical student learning to save lives ends up saving his own. CBS reporter Jacqueline Pierre Marini has the story. Last year, Cullen was a busy University of Virginia medical student working towards being an ER doctor under a lot of stress. So when he would get an occasional chest pain, he didn't think much of it. And why would he? After all, he was 26 years old and good health, a runner. But during a two-week elective course called Advanced Physical Diagnosis, he held a stethoscope against his own chest. Immediately, he knew something was wrong. We thought that, you know, maybe I had... Um, Maybe I had like a bicuspid aortic valve, which is a sort of a normal finding that can progress to disease in, you know, 20 or 30 years, but not, you know, that abnormal. 
Um, but instead, we found uh, an, an aneurysm. Within a week, Cullen was having open heart surgery. I, I didn't know this at the time, but according to Dr. Crone, I, you know, maybe weeks, weeks to months before it would have burst, um, which would have almost assuredly been fatal. If he hadn't been in medical school, his condition probably would have been left undiagnosed. Extremely lucky that we, that we picked it up because um, otherwise, you know, there's no telling what would have happened or if I ever would have felt symptoms before, uh, before bursts. For Cullen, this has changed more than his general outlook on life. It's changed the way he approaches his future profession. Seeing just what it's like being a patient and, and seeing what exactly they see in their doctors um, is, is a really eye-opening experience because, um, you know, you're only you're always thinking about the patient, but the patient doesn't always see that. Um, and I think it'll make me a lot more open with my patients and and probably a lot more talkative with them. And now Cullen gets to move forward with his dream of becoming an emergency room doctor. Hmm. How about that? Now, oftentimes emergency room doctors deal with a lot of life threatening health issues, including drug overdoses. So after the break, we're going to learn about an opioid clinic that's looking to offer hope to people here on Delmarva, plus what local officials are doing to help the nation's fastest growing drug problem. Officials are also looking for folks to quit smoking. Although the numbers are dwindling, they are certainly not low enough. Still ahead, we learn about the latest quit smoking campaign. See if it changes your mind. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.